Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Talking about John's briefs today with Tim Forshe at C2 Tactical. Kind of a new setup for us to have a little bit more quiet and a little different lighting. Uh, had a case, I mean, went super viral on the channel. The short went bonkers, like 18 million views or something wow. like that on the channel. Of a California homeowner who the day she picked up her pistol from their stupid 10 day wait, uh, had a drunk in the neighborhood who was a known problem in the neighborhood, ring their doorbell at 1030, husband opens the door, they end up in a fight, she ends up um, shooting that guy a bunch of times and uh, defending her husband with deadly force. A couple of people in the comments on that were like, wait a minute, they were just having a physical fight, why in the world can she use deadly force and shoot that guy? Let's ask the attorney. To win the fight after the fight, you need help. After a use of force, I trust Firearms Legal Protection to help me win the fight for the rest of my life. From their 24-7 attorney answered hotline to coverage for the use of all legal tools, Firearms Legal Protection has you covered. Get a discount by signing up at the link below. It is funny to me, Tim, that to me this, I mean, I didn't have any problems with it at all. I was like, oh, this is fine. Um, but sometimes I forget that not everybody has that perspective. Right. And uh, and they don't have the experience to recognize, no, mm -hmm. this is really not a problem. Right. Even in California, because I, the funny part to me was the number of comments of the people who are like, well, if this was in California, she'd be in prison. <laughs> well, no, she, this was in California. <laughs> it was in California. And she wasn't charged with anything. <laughs> and I mean, they took her gun away because it's gonna yeah. go into evidence locker, sure. you know, and those things. But uh, so, Again, if you boil it down to, well, her husband was in a fist fight, and so she shot a guy who was fist fighting her husband. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound great. No, if you if you put it in that in that little vacuum, it doesn't sound great. No. So why is it okay? And and again, let's make sure we preempt this. It's it's not great. There's nothing great about any of this stuff, right? I mean, it was horrendous, the whole thing. But it's a terrible um, day. Again, we've talked about this before. There's the issue of uh, you shot an unarmed person versus you shot somebody who you knew to be unarmed. First of all. This guy's cleaning his, her husband's clock, yeah. right? Um, yeah, I, maybe he's drunk, so he's just got you know the, the strength of the gods because he's not feeling any pain. I don't know what's going on, but it looked like the husband was getting the worst end of this thing. And we've seen on your channel, I've seen a video where a, one punch to somebody's face and that person died. So yeah, it, it could definitely know, knock you out, cause you a big problem. So at, at what point when, I've been, when I'm being pummeled by this guy, am I in fear for my life? And the answer is it, that, that point comes, right? Maybe it won't come in this fight, but it comes in fights and it could come in this fight. So uh, you can't say, well, there's no risk to, to being maimed or being killed by what my husband is going through right now. Yeah, of course there is, right? Secondly, that presumes that she knows that it was merely a fist fight. We didn't have any audio. How did she know her husband hadn't been stabbed nine times? It was low light, I assume. It was in downstairs yep. in the middle of the evening. How does she know that her husband is not bleeding from a cranial head wound right now? She doesn't know that. All she knows is someone is in their house attacking her husband, okay? And in that vacuum, I think it's pretty hard to say she's not justified in using lethal force. So somebody has made unlawful entry to their home. That gives you a presumption of the, you know, the, I always hate talking about the castle doctrine, but this is what it's yeah. for. So. so so again, if I if I paint it in a much better light, mm -hmm. a man has made unlawful entry to my home and assaulted me and is holding me on the ground and pummeling me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I am grounded and unable to fend him off. Correct. Well, just, now... Just a matter of time. Now we got a whole different set of presumptions here. And, and again, California, like every state in the union, there's not a state that doesn't have mm -hmm. castle doctrine, right? I, I hear that sometimes. Well, you know, in my state, you got to run outside the back door. No, you don't. No, you don't. There's not a state in the union that doesn't have castle doctrine. And a castle doctrine doesn't give you the right to kill people. A castle doctrine gives you presumptions. It is not a hunting license, as no. I try to tell people all the time. Yeah. It says you can't retreat, mm -hmm. and you get strong presumption of acting reasonably. Correct. Right? Can be rebutted, but but again, that you acting are acting reasonably, that you reasonably fear for your life when somebody's doing that. Something else that some that some people noticed is that it is potential that our homeowner dude pushed the guy first. But within the house or outside? At the, at the threshold. At the threshold. Again, I, good note. I'm glad somebody caught that. I don't think it changes the legal analysis because the guy's trying to make entry. So would that, is that a reasonable way to prevent that? Uh, are you kidding? Put your hand on the chest and push him away. What could be more reasonable than that? Right. So, yeah, I got no words. Well, even if you, get off my property, dude. Yeah. So maybe he's the known drunk in the neighborhood. He knocks on the door. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, I, I, a lot of people came up with the right answer, which is don't open the door. Right. Right. Amen. I mean, the number one answer is don't open the door. And, and let's let's put We don't know. There's no audio, as I recall. Correct. correct. So we don't. I mean, maybe the guy on the other side of the door was the world's best con man. And he was like, 
man, my, you know, I was in a car crash and my daughter's bleeding to death, man, please open the door. I got to come in. You know, I mean, we don't know what prompted the door to be opened. So let's give the guy benefit of the doubt. Right. I'm calling 911 for you right now. They'll be here any second. Yeah. I mean, you, you just don't open the door. Don't open the door. Have but a security <laughs> door. Maybe open the door if you got a security door. But why Why you just open the door and bam, the guy's in. I, wow. Well, yeah. and, and I can see the fact that, okay, the guy's known in the neighborhood. We know who he is. We've had interactions before. I know he's a drunk. I know he's a moron. And and so I those, make me I make those a, all argue that I wouldn't open the door. I, I make a mistake, <laughs> and I go I gotta look this guy in the eyes and yeah. go, damn it, Bill, get out of my yard. You know what I mean? And, you think he's harmless? Right. Yeah, you think yeah. that he's not that? And then and then dummy Bill, drunk dummy Bill goes, you know, no, screw it, this is my house, and he starts coming in, and I go, no, get off. I I can use reasonable physical Absolutely. force to enforce a trespass Absolutely. on my own property, right? right? So I push. But I don't recognize this guy's drunk enough to be a honey badger and, mm -hmm. and takes me down and starts pummeling me. And and I'm not good on my, you know, on the ground. And all of a sudden he's biting me and kicking me and punching me yeah. and all those things. And I start screaming and my wife's upstairs with this gun she just bought. Thank God she comes and uses it. Well, thank God California doesn't have an 11 day waiting period. Right? Amen to that. I mean, wow. You know, Amen to that. Thank, thank goodness we have to wait before we can get our guns, because man, that that saves a lot of violence. So. And of course, California's gun laws are a yeah, mess, right? Uh, Self defense laws are good. Gun laws are absurd. You're, it's an insult to the word absurd to say they're absurd. Yeah, so. they they are absurd, but their their self defense laws are actually mm -hmm. quite good. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I I obviously am very conversant in Arizona, and then whenever I have a case in another state, I get super conversant in that state too. I, I always tell people, interestingly, whether we're talking about Hawaii or California or New York. If we're talking about the laws of self-defense, there's really not an ounce of difference between any of the states. It's pretty, pretty much uniform. the same. A lot of difference between where you can have guns and how you can acquire guns and what guns you can acquire and all the nonsense that goes along with the, with the gun control scheme. But the, pretty much the law gets this self-defense thing figured out. Yeah, yeah. pretty pretty yeah. uniform. I think that's because it's based on a thousand years of Western yeah, common exactly. law. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's this is... You know, when people are like, well, we should be able to, you know, shoot thieves. Like we used to, you know, they used to hang horse thieves. Hang horse. No, no, vigilantes used to hang horse thieves. Right. Our state historian has come on the record and said there has never been a case of a legal hanging for a horse yep. thief. The court has never done that. And so do vigilantes do it? Yes, that's not acting under nope. the color of law, and friends. Horse, yeah. uh, it's a posse ain't law, okay? But, but that's a different story. Uh, so I, I think the big issues here... Was he legal to open the door? Of course he was. Was he legal to push the guy? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he was, given the circumstances. Was his wife legal to shoot that guy, given the circumstances that he was under? I think so. I believe so. And and so and part of it, too, is that she seemed like she was fairly small. It looked yeah. like she was fairly small. So now we get back to the disparity of force. Is she supposed to not use her gun, but rather jump into the fray and start trying to overpower this guy with just mere physical force, not going to happen. And I think that's a great argument yeah. for the right to keep and bear arms. Yeah. And, and one it's of the reasons... equalizer. Yeah. yeah. Because, because of the fact that I'm small, I'm frail, I can't fight. Mm -hmm. And yet, I have the ability to stop somebody trying to kill my husband. Right. Or me. Or me. Yeah. But, but I mean, in the case that we found yeah. ourselves, this man has... Is, is feral and is pummeling my husband to death. And even though I am weaker and older and frailer and not capable, this gun- I saved my husband's life. Enabled me to save his life. Yeah. And that is why the right to keep and bear arms is so Amen. important in my opinion. And and that's why I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for uh, what we're seeing under uh, Bruin rulings mm -hmm. because of course, California is fighting, kicking and screaming about it as is New York, New Jersey, yep. Hawaii, Washington. Um, but I think over the next 10, 15 years, we're going to see that those, they're going to have to come into line. They're just going to Hopefully to. quicker. But yeah, I, I would say five to 10, I would hope five, for. Yeah, I, I hope less, but you know uh, what I mean? It's not going to be an easy fight. But we're already seeing victories. We're already seeing California is giving a lot more CCW permits. You yeah. mentioned you knew a young lady that got a permit in Hawaii. Yeah. Which is unheard of. Yeah, one of our employees. New York's, New York's lost a lot of their challenges to the Bruin ruling. So, I mean. Every the, time they the go to court, all, their, all their, you know, uh, uh, what do they call they them? They call the, them the, the special exclusionary areas. Special exclusionary areas, areas, yeah. areas mm -hmm. or sensitive places. Yeah. And they're like, no, that's not okay. No, that's not okay. No, that's not okay. I think they're going to, I mean, again, unless Bruins overturned, which could happen, I think they're going to, they better get used to that. And hopefully they'll eventually stop squandering the public funds to fight battles that shouldn't be fought, that can't be won. Yeah. And so good. We'll see. This is a, a lawful shooting that I think was not only lawful, but was appropriate, yep. was uh, good. Thank God she was armed. Thank God they had it in the house. A mistake to open the door. Okay, Tim? Don't, don't bring into houses. Demon rum. There it is. Thanks for the knowledge, man. Always, buddy. Thank you.